Judy, mm -hmm. look what I have. Ah, uh, William, go big or go home. We'll show you how you can get both next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at French Prairie Gardens and we're celebrating Berries, Brews and Barbecues. And with those three lovely things, Berries, Brews and Barbecues, we're going to show you how you can enjoy all those tastes of the season. We'll also be telling you about a new feature film that's coming out and how you can get free passes courtesy of Garden Time. Coming up in the show today, we'll be showing you some plants that attract butterflies and hummingbirds to your garden. We'll also be showing you visualscaping and explain what it is. But first, we pay a visit to the Rose Garden Store. So I'm here with Lilia at the Portland Rose Garden and we're at the, the Portland Rose Gift Store. Now, what, what is that and where is it located? Well, we are located at the International Rose Test Garden in Washington Park. And the store was built to benefit the city of Portland, really Portland Parks. Uh -huh. And uh, really never expected to make a profit, just to be here uh, to sell postcards. So a lot of people still think of us as a little postcard souvenir shop. And I, you know, when I heard that we were going to be filming at the at the Portland Gift Rose Gift Store, I thought, well, do they sell rose plants? But you really, that, that's not what you sell. No, <laughs> but you're not alone. We get a lot of questions, people seeking particular roses. And luckily, we have lots of great nurseries yeah. that we refer them to. Um, we have on occasion sold a rose that we call the International Rose Test Garden yes. Rose. And that's about the only live plant material. Until recently, we didn't even have fresh flowers, but we do sell fresh flowers here now. Primarily, we sell rose-themed, garden-themed gifts. So it is a gift store. Um, and it's really stuff, though, what I like about walking through the store, which is, it's small. It's, what, what 400 square feet? Just over 400. <laughs> that's, that's very small, but you have so many things, and a lot of them, it's not just like, just tchotchke things. It's really stuff that actually a lot of it is functional in life and, in, and you can use it. Absolutely. Um, it, ranging from, you know, hats, which on a day like today you and I could both benefit <laughs> from. Um, sunglasses with roses on them. Sunscreen. Uh, you know, so part of it is thinking things that are functional, but then we have rose tea, which we sample every yeah. day, and even local stash rose tea. We have rose jam. And you do jam. concentrate a lot on, not everything you carry is local, but you really concentrate on the Northwest and getting that stuff in. Absolutely, and I try to um, contact people. I, I go to a lot of festivals and markets and you know just ask people, are you willing to do something for us? Yeah. And generally, they're very, very happy to do that. And the store really does, I think one of the great things about it is it does a great benefit, not just for the Portland Rose Garden, but for the, for the whole parks and recreation. Tell me about that process. Yes, so the money that we raise here actually goes into the general fund for Portland Parks. So it benefits all parks, not yeah. just this park. And uh, as the store has been paid off, obviously that happened years ago, it's nice to see that it seems to be increasing the amount of money that goes into that general fund. And really, this, this tiny little gift store has made a tremendous amount of money, hasn't it? Absolutely. Not a small amount at all. Over a million dollars as of 2014. And actually, this year proves to be even a better year than last year. So I'm wow. looking to contribute even more. And I like that because, of course, we, we love the Rose Garden and we want it to be maintained and kept. But we, Portland, we love our parks. Absolutely. <laughs> we love our parks. And this is such a favorite place for international visitors. Everybody is so impressed that A, it's free, that it's a city park, and that it is, it really relies so heavily on volunteers. You know what I really like too is that you have so many people from all over the world yes. coming here, and here in the gift store, you actually have a great selection of stuff that appeals to, to people from all over the world as well. Well, I'd like to think so. Um, you know, there, there's definitely a, um, it's a challenge always because there are people who want local American made, which I look for as well, but they have to be willing to pay the price, which generally is a little higher, yeah. but it's generally better quality as well. It's true. And, and as I walk through there and I see things like scarves too, and all kinds of 
uh, lotions and soaps, and then there's just beautiful pictures. It's just a really great collection of stuff that when you come out of the Portland Rose Garden, you can stop by and take a little piece of that home with you. That's our goal, is that you want to take something home to remember your visit. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Lily. And for more information, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the website. You can find out what the hours are when they're open. Come by and get up something. Not only look at the roses, but take something home with you to remember this beautiful garden. Lily, thank you so much for thank your time. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, and I'd like to invite you to check out our website where you'll find valuable gardening information that you know is local to our area. Check out our gardening solutions page where you'll find over a hundred helpful brochures or sign up for our email newsletter to receive timely gardening advice, inventory updates, and upcoming classes and events. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. On 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. Don't you just love all the things inside Garden Time Magazine? So much great information about gardening. I do, William. There's new plants, adventures, recipes, local gardeners, home tips. And it's free, right in your email. But there's two things you left out. What's that? <laughs> you and me. <laughs> we write some of the articles and get to share our gardening knowledge. Of course, I should have. William, where did you go? Right here, Judy. You'll find both of us every month in Garden Time Magazine. Sign up for your free subscription on the Garden Time website. Experience more than 130 great beers and ciders from 65 breweries at the 11th Annual Oregon Garden Brew Fest, June 19th through 21st. Sip your beer while strolling through 80 acres of gardens, enjoying live music on two stages and tasting local foods. The Oregon Garden is less than an hour south of Portland in historic Silverton, and tickets start at just $15. For tickets to the Oregon Garden Brew Fest, visit OregonGarden.org. Well, I'm talking about squirrels today with Angie from the Lake Oswego Backyard Bird Shop. And you know, squirrels, we either love them or hate them, so, but you really cater to both kinds of people at the store. We do. So what about loving them, so feeding them and taking care of them? We offer all kinds of um, <laughs> food for squirrels and nut boxes for squirrels, feeders. Um, this is a basic nut box with a corn holder and the squirrel just opens that up and <laughs> takes the nuts from the inside um, and they, they eat the corn from the front as well. Jays also like the corn. You know, they are so smart, they can really figure out how to open that up and to really use it. I'm sure that it has to be filled almost every day. It does need to be filled almost every day. Um, you can ration squirrels if you'd like to, um, just giving them you know, a cup or two a day. Um, but if you feed them, they show up. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So for the people though, that they think they're such a nuisance, there's a mm -hmm. lot of things that we could do to kind of keep them away from our feeders and away from our yards. Definitely. Uh, we have all sorts of squirrel protection um, for feeders. Mm -hmm. uh, we, here we're showing a post baffle and that is for a four by four post, but we also have a pull baffle for a shepherd's hook. Mm -hmm. These are a really cost effective um, way to prevent squirrels from climbing up the poles and they work very well. Yeah, and it, it's adjustable, so that's really nice that it can do any kind of a, a pole like that. It is, yeah, you can put it on any size pole from about a half inch up to a full inch. Uh, and so it prevents them from going from the ground up. Right. They can't get around that. That's correct. Ah, neat. But I see that you have some other ones here, and it's like, because they are so crafty, I think people have gotten so ingenious about making feeders that exclude squirrels. Right. Um, our best squirrel-proof feeders are actually the squirrel busters. <laughs> Um, these ones are weighted so that when a squirrel climbs on them, they actually close down. Um, those are going to be the most effective for keeping squirrels out of your bird seed. Ah, and I noticed this one also has a baffle on top. It does. This is a rain cover baffle. Um, that's a, a new innovation for the squirrel busters, just to keep rain out of the food ports and keep the food from clumping. Ah. 
There's also some that go on the top, though, so in case they're climbing over, they can't get down? Top baffles do um, provide a protection from the top to keep squirrels from climbing down to a feeder. They work good in areas where you, maybe you're hanging a feeder from an overhang uh, from the eave of a house, and you can put a top baffle on. It also protects against the weather. Ah, but what about, too, sighting? So that's really important. Like, sometimes I, I put it close, too close to a tree, and I notice them going down from the branches right onto the feeder. Right. Um, a squirrel buster, to be really effective does need to be hung about 16 inches away from a wall or from a tree. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a situation where you can accommodate that, then using a cage feeder oh. is really effective. Mm -hmm. um, the squirrel can climb on the outside of the feeder and they can try to shake it, but <laughs> they get very little food out. Um, and the small songbirds, they just go right inside the cage. Ah. And I see that you have this other one and I have seen videos of this and it's entertaining. This <laughs> is an entertainment piece. This is the Yankee Flipper. And this one is battery operated and rechargeable. And people usually buy this feeder if they really enjoy watching the squirrels get <laughs> thrown from the feeder. This is, it, this is what it does. It actually spins and throws a squirrel off when they climb on. <laughs> um, eventually the squirrels do stop coming mm. to this feeder. And so we have a tip from a few customers that what they like to do is to let the feeder die down, let the battery go ahead and die, let the squirrels feed for a couple of weeks, and then recharge it, and then the entertainment <laughs> begins again. Sometimes we have too much time on our hands. Right. <laughs> And then what about feed? Because I've heard something you could put, add something to the seed to kind of keep the squirrels away. Yeah, we have a product um, here called Flaming Squirrel. <laughs> And this is a habanero pepper oil wow. that's added to the bird seed. Um, you can coat any kind of seed with this oil, and it is hot for the squirrels. They're mammals, and they have a full array of taste buds, and so they really feel that heat, and they'll generally leave it alone. Oh, that's funny. We also have um, seed that has already been treated. Okay. This is sunflower seed that's all had the shells removed, um, and it's been treated with the hot pepper oil. And this one is more convenient. Sure, sure, you don't have to do it yourself. Yeah. That is so nice. And I see that you have a handout, which is really nice to take home so that you have that information at your fingertips. Sure, this is our handout on um, squirrel proofing an area. It provides a lot of information that you can take home. Also has some information about rats and mice and raccoons um, for preventing them in the garden. Um, and how to just really keep your area clean and squirrel free. Yeah, that's really important too. You know, there is a lot of information on their website and they have many different sites that you could visit around the Portland and Vancouver area. So go to gardentime.tv, we'll click you over to their website and you can get all those locations. Thanks, Thanks Angie. Judy. So I am here with Karen, who is a master gardener in Washington, and where are we at right now? We're at the Clark County um, Extension Office at the 78th Street Heritage Farm in Vancouver. Nice. So here's what we're going to talk about quickly. Okay. There is a lot of people who want soil samplings done so that they know what their soil levels are, what they mm -hmm. have in it, what they need to do, because sometimes they plant stuff, it doesn't turn out so well. Right. You guys have this great packet. Tell me about it and, okay. and why it's so special. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so if you just come into the extension office uh -huh. here, we'll give you a whole little kit um, that will explain exactly how you go about collecting your soil sample and uh, the form that you fill out. And this is sent to a, you, the, the client, you, send it in to a, a local lab. We provide all that information. Um, it costs as little as like $12. Nice or you can go higher based on the kind of information you want out of your soil sample. So Karen, why is it important that we know what's in our soil? Well, it's important to know uh, what you need to add to your soil to grow the crop you're intending to grow, uh -huh. or perhaps you don't need to add anything at all. Um, so it, it doesn't make sense to add nutrients yeah. and, and you don't want to do stuff that you don't need into to do. your yeah. ear Perfect. garden if you don't need it. So for more information on this, this great idea and how you can do it yourself, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Thank you so much. Thank Karen. you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. They had to take the car, they had to get it open with the jaws of life, take me out on a backboard, took me to a Trauma One Center. I absolutely feel like the Subaru saved my life. Well, we, we trust Capital. We trust our salesperson here, Jackie. 
Jackie's great. I believe that she really cares about us. She teaches me about the Subaru. Our, Our way, way on the, the parkway. parkway. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Coffee, nature, and peace of mind. A new way to envision outdoor spaces. A new way to shop. Visit Drake's 7Ds, Portland's only outdoor living showroom on Shoals Ferry Road. We at Garden Time would love to take you to the beautiful gardens of Versailles. Unfortunately, we can't. We can do the next best thing. We can take you to a movie that showcases the making of that wonderful garden. Are you a believer in order? Order? Of the landscape. Well, I admire it. The movie is called A Little Chaos and it stars Alan Rickman, Kate Winslet, and Stanley Tucci. It's a historical drama which takes place during the time of the installation and creation of the gardens, but it's also a love story. And the love story happens between Andre, who is the designer of the garden, and Sabine, a fictitious character who brings a little chaos into the garden and into his life. Your Majesty. A large, honest scent. Some of the roses seem faded and overblown. That fate awaits all roses, sire. Walk with me. There are 75 first-come, first-served passes available. You can go to gardentime.tv and click on the This Week link for all of the information. Now, this is a special screening premiere happening on Monday, June 22nd at 7 p.m. So go to gardentime.tv and click on that link. And we will see you at Versailles. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, June 13th and 14th, 20th and 21st, featuring Oregon Craft Brews and Ciders. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. I'm at Margie's Farm and Garden, and this weekend there's a lot of events going on, so I'm with Kathy, and Kathy, what exactly is going on? Oh, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> it's just it's starting crazy already. We are doing a vintage flea, and it's a flea market, uh, vintage, antiques, handicrafts, a little upsell, a little, a little redos. Yeah, so I mean, it's just going to be a blast. we got some food and some wine tasting. We've well, in this all. booth, I can see some things that have been repurposed, so that's really cool. So the vendor actually has gone and like just kind of changed things, made them just a little bit cooler to add to your home or garden. Exactly, exactly. That's the big thing right now. You go out, you find these cool, funky pieces, and you can turn it into something totally different or just, you know, kind of vamp it up from what its original purpose is. And, you know, I think a lot of people are busy, too, and so I don't have time to go do that. So these vendors have actually been creative and done that. Yeah, exactly. It's a great place to get some good deals on some older furniture that's got some really cool vibe to it right now. But, um, you know, they've taken the time to, to do all that work for you and you don't have to. So you have to pay them for their time and their, you know, right. and their expertise. But, uh, you know, you can get some really good deals. Yeah. And I think it's fun because you can spend the day here because you can go and look at all the cool vendors. But you can have a glass of wine. You can have some snacks. So it's really going to be a good day. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be great. Both days, today and tomorrow. All right. And then I'm also going to talk to Margie because it's not just about the vendors. You have some things going on in the store. Yes. This weekend, today and tomorrow, we are doing 30% off all of our flowers. That includes our annuals, perennials, hanging baskets, patio containers, um, all our bedding plants are all 30% off this weekend. And really, if you didn't get around to it, I mean, we're all busy, as I said before, yes. and if you didn't get around to it, it's not too late to add that color to your home. Oh, it's never too late. Every flower bed always needs a little addition <laughs> and add into it. And, and even in the warm weather, um, it's just important to keep your flowers watered. And uh, they definitely tell you when they need water. <laughs> You'll see them looking sad if they need some extra water, so. Just make sure you get out there. <laughs> make sure you get out there when you see it. So yeah, no, we've got some great flowers. They're still looking beautiful and 30% off. You can't beat that. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, come out to Margie's Farm and Garden and come out and see all the vendors for the vintage flea and shop for a beautiful color for your garden or your deck right now. Thanks so much, girls. Thank you Thank very you. much.
So I'm standing here with MJ at the beautiful Farmington Gardens, and MJ, today you have collected some, some great specimens for hummingbirds, butterflies, and birds. So sure. let's just jump right into this card and start talking about them. Okay, well, right here, front and center, is this great pink flowering spirea. Beautiful. It's a nice deciduous shrub. It's gonna lose its leaves in the winter time, but during the spring and summer, it will have these beautiful flowers that the butterflies love. And you'll even find some nice bees coming to them. Yeah. So it is great and offers a lot of color and even a little shelter for those small birds that might need to certainly go underneath, you know, find some shelter from the neighborhood cats. And it seems like down here you have actually picked some shade plants and mm -hmm. that, that's odd, but I think most of us think hummingbirds especially want full sun, but right. they don't. Hummingbirds need a little shade too, you know, they're buzzing around all day. So these are some of my favorite hummingbird feeding plants. A um, couple of these are annuals. You've got a little begonia here yeah. with this great tubular uh, flower and also the taurinia, which nice. is wonderful hanging baskets. So hummingbirds love that. And that would be great too for people that have only a patio. If you're in an apartment right. or a condo, mm -hmm. you don't have to go without nature. You can plant stuff You like can that. have it all there. Excellent. Yep, exactly. Um, and then I also have one more for the shade, which is the hardy fuchsia. Nice. Nice. Yep. This is beautiful too. I love it. So that these two here, the purple and the yellow, we've got the purple is an annual. It's a heliotrope. So it's just going to be a one season sure. plant. Um, but the butterflies will definitely be attracted to this. They love, you'll find butterflies being attracted to plants that have those uh, petals that are real flat. Flat so shaped. they can land. So they can oh, land. That makes and sense. these two are both great examples of that. The That's purple a, and is the, this a lantana? This is a lantana. The beautiful. yellow is a lantana. <laughs> This is, I love this color. Leaf. So this is a nice smoke tree and I added this in here just because it's really nice and adds some nice color. Uh -huh. um, but also it's just one of those nice trees that can offer shelter to a lot of the birds around. Yeah. Um, again, we have another spirea here, um, similar to the smaller one up front. Just really an, an attractive, yeah, really that. nice bright colors. Yeah. And I can see I can see butterflies just landing on it. It looks like little landing pads for they, them, so it's really perfect. It's exactly perfect. what it is, yeah. This is a nice foliage. So what this is, and unfortunately we don't have the blooms on it right now, but this is a butterfly bush. Oh, beautiful. So I think many people know what the butterfly you know, flower looks like. It's very long, almost like a lilac. Uh -huh. um, different colors, pinks and purples really fragrant, sweet fragrance. <laughs> I would expect that the common name butterfly bush right. might give it away as to what it would attract. Yeah, so the butterflies <laughs> seem to really love they it. Seem yeah. To, don't they? yeah, they love it. <laughs> now and this then, this keeps fighting with me, doesn't yeah, it? Yes, <laughs> so this is a pompous grass and this is something that really is more for a lot of different birds. Um, it's an evergreen grass and in probably mid to late summer you'll see these big poofs of um, like seed heads almost, a yeah. big poof up on top. If those last through the winter, the birds will use those for their nesting material. Wow. Really nice. And just, it's amazing how those tiny little birds can just rest right on the blades of grass. And that, that's very smart, MJ, because I think a lot of times we forget, we think about just food for them, but they can also use right. this for nesting material. They very do. Clever. Yeah, they love it. Both this, the pompous grass and the big tall grass we've got here, they love the seed heads for food and then the nesting material also. Nice. And for shelter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, up front here, if we can go up front. <laughs> if we can dig through the jungle, huh? Um, this is a nice holly. Beautiful. A great evergreen shrub. Um, so it's really nice in the landscape. It will be there all year. But then in the winter, you'll get the red berries. And again, the birds are going to love that. They'll nest in here. They will have the berries. And it will be a good protect protect protection home for them nice. over the winter. Yeah. And then this is the flowering currant. Lots of big flowers in the springtime, and then you'll get some dark black berries on it. So this is like the, the ribes with the uh, the King James, what's the name of the? King Edward. King Edward, King yes, Edward, that's yeah. such a beautiful one Really popular, one too. it's gorgeous. It's yeah. nice that a lot of these plants can provide so much for nature, mm -hmm. MJ, but they yeah. can also add such drama to our gardens for ourselves as right. well. Right, yeah, so it's yeah, enjoyable nice. for a lot of different ways. Those are some cuties down there. What so down there we have the winter green, and um, this is just a very low growing, evergreen shrub or ground cover and you'll see right now we've got a few little red berries on it and that's something that um, birds and maybe even squirrels might yeah. like um, and then also you know just kind of adds that little lush look to the landscape i've been known to taste them myself they really do have that they are a little waxy yeah, yeah. They are, they're a little waxy yeah. <laughs> 
This is a beautiful specimen. And so right here we've got a uh, flowering crab apple, which it does produce a little bit of fruit on it. Um, I've added this because it's big. It's something that the birds will most certainly find to nest so, yeah. in. And then also, you know, offers them a little bit of fruit to eat. Wonderful. Now, on the planting of things, it seems like yeah. most of these plants are really pretty much the same planting habit. They are, the yeah. For the most part, most of these are really going to like um, very well-drained soil. And when you're planting, it's good to add just a good amount of compost, yeah. Yeah. kind of an even, um, even amount of compost to existing soil. Yeah. Well, you know, this might seem, oh, that's a lot of plants, but out here at Farmington, they have a huge selection of all kinds of stuff like this. So if you're interested in, in attracting birds and hummingbirds and butterflies to your garden, come on out, chat with the staff, pick up some, and make your, uh, make your garden a haven for, uh, for nature out at your own place. Thank you so much, MJ. Yeah, thank lovely, you. Lovely stuff. Thanks. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Spring is here, and now is the time to bring spectacular colors and fragrance to your garden. Farmington Gardens can help you succeed in any corner of your garden. From hanging baskets, container gardens, veggie starts, water features, or something truly unique from our gift shop, Farmington Gardens brings colors to life. Open every day, just a short drive out Farmington Road. Farmington Gardens, we're growing for you. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. So we've got an exciting new website to talk about. I'm here with Sarah, and it is called JustFreshy.com. Tell me, what, what, the, what is this about? Just Freshy is all about connecting local buyers and sellers. Nice. It's an online farmer's market, and it's for anyone who has something that's homegrown, handmade, or handcrafted, and they want to sell it. Oh. Because if you think about, do you know what your neighbors have either growing in their backyard or what their artists for or what's their craft? Yeah. Most yeah. people would say no. That's true, they would. Yeah, I wouldn't know that. No, and so this is a way to connect people locally. Oh, cool. So it's a little bit like Craigslist, but a little less creepy. <laughs> so you can search for people in your neighborhood by zip code or by city. Cool. And it's also a little bit like Etsy, only it doesn't cost anything. It will never cost anything to sell your items. And there's no shipping because everyone is it's local. Local, that makes yeah. perfect sense. And yeah. is it is it easy to get online and sign up with it? It only takes a few minutes. And you can, what's great is that you can sign up to be, I'm listed on there, and you can say that I'm one of your favorite sellers. So anytime I'm listing, you know, homemade brownies or some fresh tomatoes, you can get an alert either by email oh, nice. or by text telling you one of your favorite sellers has some new items listed on Just Freshy. And there's some stuff right here that you actually did. Tell me about this. Well, at our launch party, I traded one of my jars of um, green beans uh -huh. for this hand-forged um, garden trowel. So it can also be a bartering system as well. It doesn't have to necessarily be money involved at all. No, you can trade as well. Nice. So it's for buying, selling, and trading. Wonderful. Well, you know, this is a delightful idea, and it's right here in local, and we love local in the Pacific Northwest, so you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the website. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you.
Well, this is a fun garden to be at today. I'm with Tom Gaps, and Tom, you are a Garden Railroad engineer, and this is just a wonderful place. Well, thank you for coming to visit today. I, I enjoy showing off my railroad, and I enjoy it when other people are coming here to run trains. We have a group of club members here running trains today, and uh, you have to have one person for each train, so you need, oh, sure. you need a few people. To, to make it all work. But how lo how old is this garden train railroad? It's about four years old. We started construction in the summer of 2010 and finished the summer of 2011. Wow. So, and then we waited for Mother Nature to <laughs> fill in because sure. uh, originally it was a plant here and a plant there. And right, right. Just a way to spread in, so. Well, how did you get into it? This is, I mean, it's not a, um, a lightly taken <laughs> hobby. My gosh, it's a lot of details. I, as I approached retirement, I told my wife, I need to find something to keep me out of the house after I retire. And I, I discovered uh, outdoor garden railroading about eight years ago, and I told her, you know, I've been mowing the back lawn for 35 years. I think I own the backyard. I I'm going to put in a garden railroad, and I'm going to do it right. So we, I designed this to, to deal with a lot of trains running, a lot of people, and ease of maintenance. Uh -huh. so, that is true. That's that's the biggest thing. Ease of maintenance and ease of operation. It's, it's elevated, it's raised up off the ground, and uh, everything is heavily graveled, so it's uh, easy to weed. So anyway, that's that's the plan, and that's what we got now. And you were saying that you're not a gardener, but yeah. your plantings are spectacular. And so what did you look for when you were choosing the plants to go with the trains? Uh, I wanted to... Uh, I hired a consultant to oh, pick the plants smart. to pick the plants for me. Uh, I showed her a couple of garden railroads, so she had some idea. She'd never seen a garden railroad mm -hmm. before. And then I found pictures on the web of what I kind of wanted. And what I was looking for was a, kind of a high mountain scene. Um, Colorado, sort of um, high altitude. Um, trees, so we've got a lot of trees. There's 50 some trees here, oh. little, you know, all dwarf trees and in bushes and that's basically I gave her that to work with. She gave me um, a long list of plants to look up pictures of on the web and I went through the pictures and said I like this and no I don't like that and that's where we went. Huh? And then when it was time to plant the two of us were out here we had plants piled all over along the fence and we would just go through and say okay for this area what do you want and I'd pick out this plant and that plant we would position them and we put some rocks in place and when we had it all the way we wanted it, then the gardeners came through and actually put them in the ground. Ah, and so. you have them labeled, which is wonderful. I mean, we, as gardeners, we always want labels. We want to know what that is. So it's wonderful when you come here. Well, I knew people would ask me, and I knew I wouldn't know the answer. So I made arrangements to have labels put on all the plants. Not all the plants, but one of each type of plant. Sure. And the label is located where it's easy to, you know, to access, where you can read it easily. Right. So. And you know, we want to invite people to come out to see this garden and many other garden railways because you have a wonderful event coming up through your organization. Oh yes, we this on Father's Day weekend, we do this every Father's Day weekend on Saturday. This is our tour booklet. This year we're going to have 13 railroads on display, 12 of them indoor, excuse me, 12 of them outdoor, one indoor. Oh, fun. Um, that's, it's a kind of a stretch for us because uh, we have to be able to staff those sure. railroads all at the same time. And it's the booklet uh, gives you, it's your ticket booklet for an entire family to visit all the railroads that day. Uh, the booklet describes each railroad, gives the location, a little bit of history on the railroad, the address, directions on how to get there. Uh, and I would strongly suggest anybody who wants to come, don't try to see all of them in no, one day. Right. You're going to spend the whole day on the highway traveling between. Pick, you know, half a dozen or so that are in your area, and then come back next year and see the rest. Of course, of course. It is a really fun family event. It's Father's Day. Bring out the kids. I bet they enjoy it. Oh, yes. One of the things we tell people is, so this is a, da a chance for Dad to go around and say, see, this is what I want tomorrow on Father's Day. <laughs> Well, if you have any other questions, please go to Garden Time TV and we'll click you over to their website and you get all the information. Tom, congratulations. This is just wonderful. Thank you for coming. I appreciate the visit. Not farm to table, yard to table. A new way to envision outdoor spaces. A new way to shop. Visit Drake's 7Ds, Portland's only outdoor living showroom on Shoals Ferry Road.
In the summer months, water use can double or triple due to outdoor watering. Here are three simple tips to help save water and money this summer. Set your sprinklers so that they're watering your lawn and plants and not the pavement. Water early in the morning or later in the evening when temperatures are cooler. Group plants with similar water, shade, and sun needs together. For more water conservation information and tips, check out the Regional Water Providers Consortium at www.conserveh2o.org. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. For this month's gardening tips, I'm with Jan McNeilan. So Jan, I see a lily here, an <laughs> Easter lily. It's an Easter lily. Um, I just, from Easter, I just put it in the greenhouse, or maybe it was, I don't I think it was last year actually mm -hmm. and then if there's an empty pot I water it anyway <laughs> and so here it is and by golly it's an Easter lily that came back without any thought that it would no fertilizer right, right. no nothing it was in the greenhouse all winter and here it's back um, in Smith River California which is just below Brookings on the southern Oregon coast okay. they have what's called Easter in July and that's where lots of growers grow the Easter lily bulbs and the Easter lilies for, for Easter. Right, right. But they the have Easter, Easter in July where the lilies are blooming in the field, so oh, it's sure. kind of a oh, cool beautiful. time to go down there. Yeah. So it's worth keeping them. Because I you guess can get it a, is. A bloom the next year. That's beautiful. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and Jan, you have a good tip about bringing bouquets in from the garden. Well, when you cut flower bouquets, or, or any plants actually, but flowers mainly, make sure you give them a good shake before you bring them in the house because carpet beetles, little tiny, shaped like ladybugs, but they're like the size head of a pin, um, they feed on the pollen of flowers. And if you bring in the carpet beetles, you'll end up with carpet beetle larva, which actually does more damage to clothes than clothes moths do. Oh, wow. So you want to shake them out. And it also will tell you if you picked an old flower that's not going to last very long, <laughs> the petals will start to come off. <laughs> we'll pick another one. <laughs> but shake out the spiders or the sure. carpet beetles. Oh, that's a good one. And then I know that you have some grafted vegetables. So you're going to tell us about your tomato. Well, this, this one is a, a grafted chocolate ch um, cherry, cherry uh -huh. tomato. And when you guys were here last month, it barely was up to the f maybe oh, yeah, the here, first right. rung mm -hmm. even of the the cage. Wow, look at and that. look at that. I, so I have no idea. So I stuck in some bamboo the <laughs> other day, and we'll see how tall this will get. Duh. But I'm going to have to make the cage go higher, I right. think. Well, and there, there's some peppers too, but I haven't seen a big difference in the pepper yet. Okay. But we'll see. Yeah, it's we'll always see. good to experiment with different things on the market and see what's going on. Well, and the only way I'm going to know how the pepper's doing is having one pepper that's not grafted next right. to it and see what the comparison right. is. Right, so we'll see you next time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you have some publications. I do. There have been a lot of talk this time of year with ants, and uh, this is a publication that. Uh, is put, it's a Pacific Northwest publication that OSU has, and it can help you identify ants. Yes, this is a carpenter ant, but there's a lot of other kinds of ants. So before you panic right, sure. and start to treat for ants, right. find out what kind you have and if it's an issue okay. at all. And we'll have the links to this online. The link, right, okay. right. All right. And another publication that I was looking at was Encouraging Beneficial Insects mm, in the Garden. Of course. And so there is another publication um, th that is, uh, will list beneficial insects, what plants they like, nice. so that you could plant those in your garden to attract specific um, specific insects. Let me sure. show you here. It'll okay. even give you oh, wow. Perfect. Um, a, a really good illustration mm -hmm. and then also a, a list of plants that you can get for the garden. Ah, you know, and that's really important because we want to have a lot of produce coming out of the garden, so right. we want to make sure they're getting pollinated. Right, and so it's just a way to, to attract Definitely. more. Definitely. And then uh, one more is uh, choosing a pest control company mm -hmm. that does integrated pest management. Sure. It's just a two-page publication uh, that's the IPM is the key, and it tells you what to ask and what, 
red flags to look for. Sure. So that if you're wanting to do an integrated pest management and use more natural controls or less toxic pesticides, uh, if you have a company coming in to do it, sure. you'll know what to ask, what to look for, and so that you get what you're really looking of for. Of course, you want to be safe. Right, right. And then it's been really hot. I mean, it's early in the season, but it's been really hot. So what should we be doing for the gardens? Water, water, water. <laughs> we knew you were going to say that. <laughs> it, um, and it's been hard to keep up with, sure. a, with watering. So you could use drip systems into pots. Mm -hmm. it, this might be the year to do that. Right. And, and just, just watch your plants. They'll tell you. Fuchsias will, by the time they wilt, it's oh. almost too late. So right. don't let things wilt first, right. but look for indicator plants like hydrangeas, mums, some other plants that'll wilt first, and then you know that your soil moisture is going right, down. Right, right. Ah, well, all good tips, and thank you so much. So <laughs> You're welcome. If you have any other questions, go to the websites that we put for all these links to these wonderful publications, because they're great information that you would need for your house and your family to be safe this summer and to get more of the information. So thank you so much. You're welcome. It's such a delight for me to be out here at the beautiful French Prairie Gardens and I'm here with Stacy. And Stacy, it is that time of year when berries, brews, and barbecue is here. Tell yes, me about yes, it. Yes, yes, yeah. Well, we have uh, lots of strawberry baked goods. We have breweries. We have four different breweries this That's year great. and we have three different cideries, which is new. Usually we only have one, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, and then we also have uh, the tractor wagon ride. What is that? It's it's a hay ride, pretty much, without the hay. Without so <laughs> so if people are allergic, they don't have to worry about it. They can just hop on the tractor ride and, and take it out take to the strawberries. Yep, Perfect. yep, definitely. Um, and then we have the strawberry fields open. Uh, it is kind of getting towards the end of strawberry season yeah. though. So we will have some available for sale in the store and lots of, like I said, strawberry baked goods. We have plenty of barbecue going for people to tempt their palate. Yeah. Um, and then live music, lots of stuff going on. Come on, Stacy, for all of this fun, there's gotta be a cost. It's free admission and free parking. Wow. There are some charges for, of course, the beer tasting, but you can kind of choose what you want to do. And you still have a great selection of plants, don't we you? We do, we do. And we have some special deals for everybody going on during our festival, so they can come out and get um, all of our 12-inch baskets or buy one, get one free. Wow. Um, so if you happen to not pick up those baskets, come on out and do a little bit of farm family fun, and then pick up your plants. Or even if you decided you need a couple more baskets too, that'll work, won't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. You can always take the hangers off and find a spot for That's one. That's right. Well, for more information on this great event and for a collection of all the different events that happen out here at French Prairie Gardens, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the website. Thank you so much, Stacey. Thanks. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete too. From bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja chimney, we have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden deck or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook too. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, June 13th and 14th, 20th and 21st, featuring Oregon Craft Brews and Ciders. Enjoy barbecue, you pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. Judy, yep. do you remember when I asked you if you liked me? I mean, if you really liked me? Yeah, I liked you on Facebook. Yeah, well, I need you to do that again. Well, we really need everyone to like the new Facebook page for Garden Time. So you just go to gardentime.tv and click on the Facebook icon and like us again for our brand new page. Combat this summer's heat by using Black Gold Waterhold Cocoa Blend in your baskets and containers. Waterhold Cocoa Blend combines coconut coir and peat moss to give your containers the edge in holding up to this summer's heat and staying moist longer and this earthworm-enriched potting soil is also organic and OMRI listed. Look for Black Gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. I am 
looking at a new landscape that was put in by Rick Naylor from French Prairie Perennials, and I'm with the homeowners, I'm with Kathy and Mark, and so, Kathy, um, you were here for 20 years and you had a landscape that you were kind of tired of? Not exactly. What <laughs> happened is, uh, we we actually bought the property when my now 24-year-old daughter was six months old. And when we moved, there were small junipers that lined the property, which over the ensuing two decades and more had grown into gigantic oh, sure. and recently dying plants. And so Mark decided to take them all out, which I wasn't thrilled about. <laughs> and then uh, very recently, two giant trees that were on the, the perimeter of the property went down unexpectedly. And that's when we realized we needed to redo the front. Uh, so, Mark, you had to take out all the other plant material and get it ready, huh? Yeah, the uh, junipers had pretty much run the course throughout the whole neighborhood, so uh, they were had gotten too mature. We did uh, remove them all, and then we kind of got stuck on uh, what to do with the space. It's a big lot, and uh, <laughs> we were actually stuck for a couple of years until we ran into uh, Rick over at uh, a local uh, garden show. Ah, it was actually Garden Palooza, if I can kind yes, of it was. promote that. And so you talked to Rick, and, and he came up with these great ideas. Well, we knew more what we didn't want ah. than what we did want. Uh, when you look around our neighborhood, there's a lot of the same kind of plants and uh, sort of general landscaping ideas. And we wanted something different. We wanted something beautiful. We wanted something uh, colorful and unique. And we also wanted plants that were not commonly seen. Ah, and it looks like it's a low maintenance. I mean, this is a big area to take care of. That was extremely important. We were hoping for things that didn't need frequent pruning or plucking or raking <laughs> around uh, because there is such an amount of space. Uh, and that's what we told Rick. Uh, so, you know, we got to hear from the owners themselves what they wanted from Rick. And so we're going to go over and talk to Rick and see exactly what he put in. Now I'm with Rick Naylor from French Prairie Perennials, and he is a mastermind of visual scaping. <laughs> and so you met these people at Garden Palooza, and huh? you really came out and transformed this. They call it the park now in their family. Yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> that's what I hear. And I hear they have a lot of people that stop by and park and just kind of look at, <laughs> look at the landscape. Um, what we, you know, I got the parameters of what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. They wanted low maintenance, they wanted color, and they wanted unusual plant material, mm. and they wanted it to fit in kind of a northwest landscape oh. because that's, we're kind of surrounded with oh, northwest it's beautiful here. So, given those parameters, this is what we did. Ah, okay. And you really have deciduous plants, you have evergreens, you have different colored evergreens, which are really cool. Well, different textures are important in a landscape to mix different textures together. And mixing different colors together is also important because each plant then works with the other plant behind it or around it to bring out the best qualities in both plants. Yeah. And you know, they don't have to put annuals or perennials in because they only have that seasonal color because of the conifers and the um, maples that you have here. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And we also incorporated it in a lot of boulders because they wanted that kind of a look. Mm -hmm. So, and the important thing to know about boulders, and I can, we can talk about this one over here, is that when you're, when you're doing boulders or when you're using boulders in a landscape, just don't throw a rock out there. Okay. Okay, placement's key, and also the other key about it is make sure you have a boulder with, that, that has character to it. Now, for example, this one I picked out because I handpick all my boulders. Uh -huh. This one I picked out because it has a lot of iron content in oh, it, so pretty. it has the, uh -huh. the multiple colors to it. Very nice. And it's also not your typical round, just kind of right, uh, lump. <laughs> lump of a rock. Yeah, it has some, some character to it. Huh. And it's similar with this rock over here where it has a lot of, of layers to it. And you can see in that boulder there where it adds a lot of character to the rock too. So it's important that you do that when you're incorporating that into your landscape. But then we also wanted the unusual plants too. So we used this dwarf Norway spruce called the Pinka, which changes color during the year. So that's the other thing we wanted to do with this is have, have put plant material on that's going to evolve with the season so it looks different. Ah. And you know what's nice to talk about these people too is they're one of the winners from your contest. Absolutely, they are. <laughs> They are. We decided to have a drawing uh, to because we had such a huge response at Garden Palooza. We incorporated some other people and offered them some discounts to, have, to oh, get some wow. work done. So. Ah. so, Rick, this whole landscape here is called visual scaping, and you invented it. So, what is it exactly? Visual scaping is just a form of landscape design where instead of drawing a plan, we actually bring the plants out and set them out so people can see what the finished product's going to look like, and then we can explain what each plant's going to do as we go through the process. So, it's just eliminating a step and saves on cost but also gives you the ability to see what you're getting before you pay for it. Oh for sure. Visual scaping is a great concept and if you want to see this in your garden go to their website at French Prairie Perennials or go to gardentime.tv we'll click you over. Thanks so much and thanks for thinking of this because it is so cool. Thank you Judy. <laughs>
If you build it, build it right. Build it to last. Don't just build it for yourself. Build it for the next generation. Build it with Par Lumber and keep building the great Northwest. Par's deck sale is going on now with timber tech starting at 219, Trex 229, and cedar at 139 per lineal foot. While supplies last, visit par.com for details. Two stages, 22 shows, one sweet, unforgettable weekend. The 23rd Annual Oregon Jamboree, presented by South Pacific Auto Sales, is doing it again. We're bringing you Keith Urban, Dirk Bentley, Big and Rich, Lee Bryce, Hunter Hayes, Thomas Rhett, Sam Hunt, and so many more. July 31st through August 2nd. Tickets on sale now at OregonJamboree.com. Presented by South Pacific Auto Sales. Transform your home and garden with help from Garden Gallery Ironworks. From garden structures to home decor, we can help you refresh your indoor and outdoor living spaces. Decor that is exquisite and unique, Garden Gallery Ironworks makes your home and garden attractive, appealing, and a relaxing place to stay. Inspired designs that are locally made, Garden Gallery Ironworks, located in the Hubbard Industrial Park off 99E. Look for the amazing petunia tree. Good service to me is providing what you say you're going to do, when you're going to do it. It's knowing that we have somebody we can count on. That's what we strive for with our customers. And I think standard follows those lines also. Anytime we're sending clients outside of our offices, the people that we're sending them to reflect directly upon us. I don't ever have to worry that they're not going to get the same kind of service that we want to represent to our clients. Since 1947, we set the standard. Standard TV and appliance. So I'm standing here with Dave and we are at Horgan Hot Tub and you know I love the idea of hot tubs because you know whether you're working as a white collar worker, blue collar worker in the garden, you know you're a construction worker, we all get tired, you get a hot tub, you come home after a hard day work, bam you're there, it's relaxing. But my first question to you would be I wonder what what are some of the top concerns or thoughts that people have when they come into the stores? Sure. Well, you know, there's the usual questions about, um, you know, what size is going to be best for me, what's going to fit best in my backyard, uh, am I using it for family time, health benefits, uh, what's going to be best for me. But some of the, the concern questions that they have, uh, one of the big ones is ownership cost. Yeah. Uh, is it going to be astronomically expensive for me to maintain my hot tub? And some of the, the cost concerns are energy consumption. Is it going to shoot my energy bill up? Yeah. Uh, and some of the other questions are uh, about water care. Am I going to be spending a ton of money spending, you know, throwing a bunch of chemicals in there well, every I would, single week? Well, I would think that that would be, in my mind, I would see that as something that, wow, this is going to really spike up all of my costs. Water, electricity, everything is going to go up. Right. And that's the, the misconception is that that's going to happen. 20 years ago, sure. But the technology today has made yeah. hot tubs so affordable, not only to buy the hot tub, but also to maintain it and to use it. Uh, energy efficiency is huge in the hot tub industry now. Insulation makes most hot tubs, at least the brand that we carry, Hot Spring Spas, you're going to spend maybe 15 to $18 a month extra in hot tub, where in the past it was upwards of 40 or 50 Yeah, that's, you know, completely, that's completely workable. Exactly. And, and speaking of hot tubs and, and the water and the cost of water, mm -hmm. you guys offer something really unique with this, this type of tub. Tell me about that. We do. It's called salt water. And salt water has been around, uh, obviously, forever. For, forever. In ocean, <laughs> yeah, sure. But in the pool industry is where it got its start and then slowly migrated over to hot tubs. And the uh, hot spring spa line, which is what we carry here, uh, features the salt water system. And salt water is very easy to maintain. It's actually easier than chlorine. And see, I would have I would have honestly thought the exact opposite. In my mind, that would have been a much more difficult system to keep balanced. Sure. The technology is really where it helps. There's some cool technology in here with some diamonds and <laughs> electrodes and a few other cool things that turn that salt water into an active oxygen sanitizer. So you, it's already sanitizing your water with the system that it has in there, and then you just add a little bit of chlorine. So your maintenance every week, about five to 10 minutes per week, is what people are spending maintaining the levels in their wow, water. Wow, that's all. So some of these, some of these are mighty large. They are, I yes. <laughs> so I, I've come in, I've bought one, you're gonna bring it out to me. 
Is there like restrictions on how they can get in the backyard? Uh, it, there can be, depending on what we're facing with your backyard. Um, what we offer for every customer that, that we work with is a free backyard consultation. Nice. So our salesperson, whether it's here in our Wilsonville showroom or in Vancouver, wherever we are and wherever you are, will come to you. And we will determine uh, the best access route. Uh, accessibility is, is a big concern yeah. um, that a lot of people have. And so finding the best route to get back there, uh, whether it's going to be through a gate or through, um, you know, a sidewalk area, we come there and figure out all those questions first. So that's happening. And then what about landscape? As a gardener, I'm, I'm going to want it to look really pretty. Definitely. You can do that, can't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, whatever you have set up in your backyard, a lot of customers will kind of do the initial setup so that we don't come in and, you know, uh, tear up, the, tear whole up yard. the yard or anything like that. And we really don't. We're very careful about of course that. You are. But we'll set the hot tub in place and a lot of people will then just fill in around yeah. it. And we get pictures all the time of people who've who've set up a hot tub and then they take a picture, you know, a couple weeks later once they've got the whole setup. Very proud and, of oh, it. It's, oh, they are. It's impressive too. So, and then I'm going to assume I've got this, it's in my yard, I'm loving it. And I got some questions. Mm -hmm. who, who, how do I get those answers. That's what we're here for. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Uh, we've been in the business since 1979. Um, our sales team here has about 50 years of combined experience in the hot tub industry. Wow. And we're simply a phone call away. You know, we're a 503 or a 360 call. We're not an 800 number call where you're going to wait on a phone line forever. Yeah. We are here to help you. Wow. And after the purchase is a big, big thing for us. Um, we want to make sure that once you have the hot tub, you're enjoying it. And if you have questions about how to maintain it or um, you know, any of those questions, we do that. And we also offer classes each year for people to come out for free to be able to, to get those questions answered. For well, there you go, people. Yeah. So, you know, part of a great sale is a wonderful follow-up, and you got the whole package right here at Oregon Hot Tub. You go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. You can find out where their stores are, and then come in and get a hot tub for yourself. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all so much for spending time with us today. And Judy, you're hey. absolutely right. Hi. Bigger is better. But don't forget about Berries, Brews, and Barbecues at French Prairie Gardens happening this weekend and next weekend. For more information on today's show, we always invite you to go to gardentime.tv and to also find out more information about those free movie passes. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Aww. We at Garden Time would love to take you to the beautiful gardens of Versailles. Unfortunately, we can't. We can do the next best thing. We can take you to a movie that showcases the making of that wonderful garden. Are you a believer in order? Order? Over landscape. Well, I admire it. The movie is called A Little Chaos, and it stars Alan Rickman, Kate Winslet, and Stanley Tucci. It's a historical drama which takes place during the time of the installation and creation of the gardens but it's also a love story. And the love story happens between Andre, who is the designer of the garden, and Sabine, a fictitious character who brings a little chaos into the garden and into his life. Your Majesty. A light, honest scent. Some of the roses seem faded and overblown. That fate awaits all roses, sire. Walk with me. There are 75 first come, first serve passes available. You can go to gardentime.tv and click on the This Week link for all of the information. Now this is a special screening premiere happening on Monday, June 22nd at 7 p.m. So go to gardentime.tv and click on that link. And we will see you at Versailles. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.